Martin Harris Stadium, the home of one of the comeback stories in the college football playoff rankings this year. The Auburn Tigers just beat Georgia. They take on ULM out of the Sun Belt this week. And think back to a couple years ago in the college football playoff. 2014, Ohio State lost to Virginia Tech in game number two. Went from 16th to 4th with wins at Michigan State and against Wisconsin. Then the next year, Oklahoma lost to Texas, game number six, 15th to fourth. Couple of big road wins, Baylor, Oklahoma State. Now Auburn has two losses, different story, Clemson and that LSU one they might want back, but the jump in the rankings has already been sizable for the Tigers, and we'll see Kelly Stauffer, Jason Benetti, Chris Button downstairs. We'll see if Auburn can make sure this one today doesn't torpedo their season. How do you do that? It's about keeping momentum. They have a ton of momentum. Gus Malzahn, you didn't ask the right questions because he didn't give us a lot of information. However, it's about championship urgency. We heard that probably a dozen times, and we'll define that as time goes on, but it's about maintaining the momentum that they squarely have on their side currently. They played their best ball last week against Georgia. They have to keep it not only today, but remember who they have coming into this place at night next week. ULM has a top 20 scoring offense. We could see a lot of points in this game as Noah Igbenogany on the return for Auburn gets him to the 20-yard line. And here we go with the sophomore out of Stephenville, Texas, Jarrett Stidham, who has been around the block some. Transferred from Baylor to McLennan Junior College in Waco. 400-plus days between Crazy. starts. And you think that might have contributed to the Clemson loss, right? Yeah, I think he's learning a new language called a new offense in college football, and he hadn't played for 400-plus days. And and you just don't get back on the bike. It's not like that playing quarterback, especially in this league, but he's rolling really efficiently currently. And the guy next to him certainly is as well. Carry on Johnson, who gets this screen pass and hops through a tackle. Carry on Johnson suddenly in the Heisman discussion. The SEC's leading rusher has the first touch today. And Carry on Johnson deserves to be squarely in the Heisman race. I don't know that he can close the gap with Baker Mayfield if Baker keeps playing the way he has. But Carry on Johnson is the complete running back. Eli Stove in motion. They run a lot of jet sweep action. Stidham to throw off the sweep action to Eli Stove in wide open space for a first down against a little bit of a Swiss cheese defense from ULM. Yeah, and that's a pretty good outlet, guy. Eli Stove comes on the fly sweep or speed motion. They don't give it to him, but then he's sitting out in the on the swing pass by himself. And a good job of Jared Stidham once again finding the outlet guy. Once again on the ground, carry on Johnson. And Eli Stove is a guy who really typifies what Auburn does offensively. He's got 25 catches now and 20 rushes. He does both. Johnson again, this could be a big day for him. First down as we check in downstairs, Chris Bud. Well, as Kelly said, there's been a new buzzword around campus this week. It's championship urgency. Gus Malzahn used it several times with us and during the week. So what exactly does that mean? It means you do more because you're on the verge of something special. Jarrett Sidham told me this week he's not worried about a letdown because they finally set a standard. Now they have to play up to it. Thought Gus Malzahn's batteries were dying. He kept saying the same phrase at his press conference: <laughs> "Championship urgency." Championship urgency. There was a bit of repeating of that phrase, and I like it though. I mean, break that word down. There's a word origin. It's obviously that guy on the screen, and Chris gave us the definition. And I expect to see that out of you, Jason, and you, Chris, today as well. Thank you for the pep talk, Coach. Gary on Johnson hit by Rashad Harding and look we mentioned ULM's offense is the specialty the defense is 120th in scoring defense and 125th in total yards yeah and certainly Auburn loves to run the football as Gus Malzahn will call this offense we're a run first team that likes to play action and throw verticals and they're very balanced with the new offensive play caller in Chip Lindsay. What do we have going on here? I think we're going to check and see if it's a first down. A little timeout. But the Chip Lindsay and Gus Malzahn dynamic is an interesting one because they each have different default settings as Auburn's going to be 
a little bit short here. A couple inches. Gus Malzahn is a run first guy. Chip yeah. Lindsay is a pass first guy. Yeah, and so what you arrive at is Chip Lindsay was was really balanced at Arizona State as a play caller and Southern Miss as well. He was close to 50-50. Run pass and especially on first down, it was it was much more balanced. That's not what we see here. Chip Lindsay play calling is 65% run, 77 on first down. That's Gus Malzahn. But you see the air raid progression pass game that they're doing as the other part of this offense, and they're doing that at a high level also. That's what Chip Lindsey brought balance and that new aspect to the pass game. Carry on Johnson has to break a tackle, and my goodness, how lethal is he when he puts his foot in the ground? And ULM doesn't need to feel bad because Carry on Johnson made Georgia look like this at times. There are three unblocked defenders in that screen, and Carry on Johnson jump steps, goes outside, and ends up converting and extending this drive. Special running back. Early movement from Caleb Tucker, but no contact and no snaps and no flag. Stidham, quick toss, Slayton. Inside the 10 yard line, Darius Slayton knocked down by Roland Jenkins, first and goal on a 21 yard gain. And that early faux snap, the fake clap of the hands by Stidham, and then he's able to diagnose a little bit, and it's man to man coverage. Carry on Johnson, carrying tacklers in. I think that's what championship urgency kind of looks like on the offensive side, right? Chris gave us the definition, and it resembles that drive, the opening drive of this game by Auburn. And it's the two guys who led them to that win against Georgia in large part. Darius Slayton, the sophomore wide receiver, had the big touchdown last week against the Bulldogs, and he takes him downfield, allowing Carrion Johnson to build his Heisman CV into the end zone for touchdown number 17. Here's the one and not had the second one there. Taco Bell is a proud partner of the college football playoff. Be on the lookout for Taco Bell student sections and passionate fans like these all season long. See, what are you, you just talking have a, about the one and the second one. What do you mean? Well, there was a one team, one dream, right? So yeah. it was one person had the first one, one person had the second one. Would well, you just want the one to swap from the top to the bottom or what? Could have reused, stood on the middle stair. Well, then that guy would have nothing to do today. That second one would be already going home. He's chatting with the guy next to him anyway. Okay. Moments ago. Time, time for kickoff here. Here we go. ULM will get it for the first time. Seven nothing Auburn. Six carries, 37 yards, and a touchdown for Carry On Johnson on that opening drive and touchback city for Caleb Evans and this offense for the ULM Warhawks. He won the job from Garrett Smith. He's a sophomore out of Mansfield, Texas. Huge family, and you may know his brother Gerard, who was a starting quarterback at Virginia Tech last year, now on the Packers practice squad. What does this offense bring? It's, it's a true kind of quarterback zone read offense that runs a lot of RPOs, the run pass option. They're a gun spread, heavy run, which is who Matt Vietor is as a, a head coach, but they also have a really efficient pass game going with Evans. They run it with the Alabama transfer Derek Gore tackled by Jeff Holland, the sack leader and one of the sack leaders in the country. It is a run heavy team. They're top 40 in running as well offensively. Yeah, Matt Kubek is the offensive coordinator and he's more of a pass first guy. So when you marry the run heavy and the pass first together, what you get is a lot of first down screen game. We'll see if that holds true today. Second down, short set and a drop. That's the playmaker, Marcus Green, who they want to get in space, and he just couldn't hang on third down. And, Jason, that's a good point because with Marcus Green, he's the difference maker offensively. He's the explosive play guy. So he's going to play the slot, 
and he's going to move a lot. And the reason why is that they want to keep hands off of number three green. And Auburn does a lot of press man coverage, but typically on the perimeter, you can't press the slot receiver if A, he's on the move, or B, he's off the line of scrimmage as Green is now on the slot right. 44% on third down this year, Evans and his offense, and they do move the chains. R.J. Turner, the leading receiver yards-wise, first down. And this is the exercise. Defensive coordinator Kevin Steele for Auburn told us that. they. ULM is very efficient and they're very well coached. They know how to attack defensive concepts and they do it out in space. And so Auburn is going to have to be buttoned up, focused, and bring energy when they tackle. Which plays into the championship urgency need of Gus Malzahn. Tailback Gore trying to find some room. And here's a guy who transferred from Alabama, so knows something about Auburn. Gore out of Syracuse, New York, and had a big block kick for Alabama when he was there, scored a touchdown in the SEC championship game in the blowout win against the Gators. So he's been a big-time leader for this program, bringing some of the Saban stuff over. And I guarantee you that Derek Gore had a big voice in the locker room this week because he's been in stuff like this before. Hey, guys, it's the same game, same field. Let's go out and play and do what we do. Evans out of the backfield, Gore, wide open space down the sideline. And Gore leaves the ball on the sideline, but has a big time first down as Trey Matthews finally dragged him after a 37-yard game. We talked about attacking the defensive coverage concepts. That's a great look at it. It's man-to-man -man outside. The vertical routes take that coverage down the field, and then you free release Derek Gore out of the backfield, which means he just simply doesn't have a blocking responsibility, and Evans finds Gore for a big play. Gore gets a moment. Ben Luckett in at tailback. And Evans on the run inside the 20-yard line. You mentioned well-coached this offense. Kevin Steele, the defensive coordinator for Auburn, was so impressed yeah. with the route running and the understanding of how to break down a defense that Auburn, Auburn's defense got the short stick this week. Yeah, there isn't any question because ULM is a very good offense, a top 20 offense in a lot of categories, but it's how they go about their business. I mean, they absolutely attack concepts and do it at a high level. Evans little pitch out and the big play threat green is inside the 15 yard line Holland tracked him down but Matt Viator the head coach at ULM is a guy who came over from McNeese State he pulled off at least one upset against an FBS school there that was against South Florida a couple of seasons ago and the Sun Belt has been a dangerous league for power five teams yeah Matt Viator's mixed McNeese State team went to Nebraska and actually should have won that game. They were close at LSU in Death Valley in 2010, so that stuff matters. But what it comes down to are the things like this. You get into the red zone, you need to finish in the end zone. Evans had some time, and Williams short-armed it. Brian Williams, a senior receiver, don't think he had a clean look at that ball coming out. Yeah, and sometimes that happens. It was down by his waist, and it all of a sudden appears on you when the ball clears the offensive lineman. Remember, those guys up in front of Evans, you know, are 6'5 guys and 300 pounds, and all of a sudden the ball's on your hip, and you have to get your hands down there, and Williams did not do a good job of it right there. Second down, 10. Evans keeps it and gets hammered. Marlon Davidson, the sophomore, former SEC All-Freshman performer, third down. And Jason, you and I talked about this this week. ULM is efficient, and they're very well coached. They will have some plays. The question in my mind to you was, but how do you finish drives? You need drive finishers, and this is a good example of it. Two poor plays in the red zone, and now you're third and behind the sticks, and a guy named Jeff Hall on number four is going to get after the quarterback for Auburn. How do you come up with a play in situations like this? Holland with nine sacks. Third and 12. 
Pocket holds up. Evans for the end zone. Some contact and a flag. Jamel Dean was on the coverage, and R.J. Turner draws the penalty. Maybe that's how you finish drives. Yeah, this will be a big penalty. Pass interference, defense number 12. The penalty will take the ball to the two-yard line. Automatic first down. Jamal Dean had good coverage on Evan or on Turner to begin with. And Turner's just trying to leak out to the back pi pylon, and Evans was going to drop it on him. Dean gave the receiver a hard path, but then the ball's in the air. Dean continued on the contact, and I think correctly called on the field as pass interference. Four wide, first and goal. Kain White, the tailback, and the freshman gets engulfed. Dontavious Russell was there first, second and goal. Still got to finish. And I think that's ULM's biggest challenge in this matchup is the line of scrimmage. I mean, they don't, they're not the same as Auburn's defensive line of scrimmage. And, and they're a little beat up as well. So how do you finish, even when you get this tight in the red zone, is the question, I think, squarely on the table. I don't know the answer to that. But you need to find your playmaker, Marcus Green, number three, and get Evans out on the edge a little bit as well. ULM taking some time off the clock. Green is in the slot at the bottom of the screen. And a whistle. I think a substitution issue with Auburn and Kevin Steele on the sideline was trying to get a timeout because his guys did not look coordinated on the defensive side. There is a flag in the end zone. Substitution. Offense, five yard penalty, three first down. It actually went the other way on ULM with 12 men on the field. And it's second down, by the way. Williamson uh, signaled the wrong down accidentally. So second down. Correction, substitution fouls on the defense. Yeah, it, it was. The substitution infraction was on the defense. He just corrected it. And it's still second down. Yeah, and it's still second down. That doesn't change anything. And if I say something else, then are you going to finish with it's still second down? <laughs> uh, you said timeout. you don't. ULM, first of the half. Well, they're going to call timeout. So we'll step aside. Second and goal for ULM, trying to pull off a huge upset at Jordan Hare. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Chevy, the only brand to earn JD Power Dependability Awards for cars, trucks, and SUVs two years in a row. And Tom's. That's not just a paint by number thing they do. It's an elaborate job for the AU logo here at Jordan Air Stadium, Auburn, Alabama, and the locals may be a little restless with this opening drive from ULM out of the Sun Belt, which just beat App State in its last game. 7-0 Auburn, but here come the Warhawks. Second down. Gore looking for the end zone. And he's going to be short, so third and goal. I don't anticipate a whole lot of running room between the tackles today. I think what Auburn's defensive front seven did to Chubb and Michelle last week in that Georgia matchup is not going to prove easy sledding for ULM today. I still think you have to get Marcus Green in space, but there's less space, and Marcus Green is actually coming out of the game currently. So the next best playmaker is Caleb Evans. Get him out on the edge, but ULM just substituted and went heavy package, and I don't think that's a terrific matchup. Typically, go heavy and throw fade. Evans on the roll to one side of the field, end zone, and completes. There without their regular tight end, Josh Peterson, and that could be important in a situation like this. That could have been a Josh Peterson moment. Doug Peterson's son, the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles, actually roomed with Doug for like a cup of coffee in training camp with the Dolphins. And Josh is the playmaker that's a different kind of cat at that line or that tight end position. And it looks like ULM is staying on the field offensively. Fourth and goal. 11 out of 18 on fourth down. This would be huge. Gore. On a reverse, 
Williams. Touchdown. Brian Williams, the senior former quarterback, scores. A double reverse from the one yard line. I think you pull out all the stops when you're trying to make hay early in this one. Just a simple pitch, kind of a toss back to Brian Williams and the lead blocker, Caleb Evans, gets Williams into the end zone. Well, you said they have to create space somewhere and that's where they go to the edges one way than the other. Williams scores it with tied halfway through the first. Eight Eastern on ABC tonight, number 11 USC against UCLA at the Coliseum. Josh Rosen, Sam Darnold, Trojans have won the last two, trying to keep those college football playoff hopes still beating. Streaming live on the ESPN app as well. Some bad news for Auburn. Jeff Holland, one of the best sackers, is off the field. There during that last touchdown, he hobbled off the field, could not put any pressure on his right leg. The athletic trainers looked at him. He's currently in the tent. As soon as I get more information, I'll let you guys know. Chris, thank you. Jeff Holland, who is trying to get to that Auburn single season sack record, three would give it to him outright, but he is off the field. And Chris will follow up when we have the opportunity. Igbenogany just got absolutely popped by Cortez Cisco. Oh, my. Well, ULM certainly is bringing the intangibles early, that energy, and this pop. You maintain that momentum of that 75-yard drive where you possess the ball offensively for five and a half minutes and 13 plays, and I think ULM is is here to play a football game. Cisco looked like he was going to take Igbenogany back home with him, carried him for a couple yards. Carry on Johnson had a great first drive. They go right back to him, and he doesn't have much on first down. Corey Strauder, the freshman out of Monroe with the tackle second down. The worst case scenario for Auburn is to kind of slop around in this game early, let alone the entire game, and have some of your guys like Jeff Holland get nicked up a little bit. That's a nightmare scenario for Gus Melzahn. Jarrett Stidham on second down. Loads of time, he can run, and he slings it out. Four again across the 25 to Ryan Davis. Right at the stick for Auburn and a first down. And that might be one of the best things that Stedham does is he throws the ball well on the move. Davis had a nice catch and run against Georgia last week in that big victory. And here he is again. Caught a tunnel screen for a touchdown against Ole Miss. Kind of that catch and go guy on the outside right now. Yeah, and they throw that screen behind the line of scrimmage so the blockers downfield can already be engaged. That's one of the trends I've seen in college football. They can do it with slot receivers in motion or running backs. You throw it behind the line so blockers are already leading those guys out. Devin Barrett is checked in for this toss from Stidham. And Barrett has a lane across the 40-yard line and a first down Auburn to the 45. So one of the keys for Auburn down the stretch is to make sure the pitch count isn't too high for Johnson. So carry on Johnson comes out. And Stidham once again on the screen. It's blown up. Davis hit by Jawan Offray for a loss. The quickness of Offray on that now screen, which simply means that the quarterback is going to bang it out there as quickly as he possible can, a lead blocker by the fellow wide receiver. But Offray's quickness to get that receiver to the ground before he could get going. For a depleted defensive secondary for ULM, which has played well so far in spots. Once again, Davis, they love this play today, and Davis is into plus territory, down to the 41 in the arms of Austin Hawley. And Jason, I think over time, that's the tough matchup. Get it to our guys in space if we're all burning. Who on ULM is going to consistently make tackles? 
RPO and the O took a while. Yeah, that did not look good. Stidham thought he was going to give it to carry on Johnson. Carry on Johnson looked back as if he didn't know where the ball was, and in the end, the quarterback gets what he can. Second down for the Baylor transfer, Stidham. Pressure coming. Stidham floats it. And it's intercepted. Picked off by Roland Jenkins, the redshirt senior. Uh-oh. We talked to Matt Vietor about how you competed with teams at McNeese State in games like this. And he said... The opposition turned it over early, and we made some plays early. There's a look at both of them right there on that really good interception by Jenkins. And remember what the defensive coordinator, Mike Collins, said about Jenkins. He said, look, Roland's playing because we've had a lot of injuries. He's a senior, but in name only, has not played in a lot of games, and he just confounded Jared Stidham, who goes to the phone for some guidance from upstairs. And Steedham threw that ball late, and he threw it off platform or off balance. It wasn't a good decision by the quarterback either. Pump and go. Evans wants it all down the sideline. Contact and incomplete. Jason, worth noting, Jeff Holland is still not out on the field. He's come out of the medical tent. He is able to walk up and down the sidelines a little gingerly, but he does not have his helmet with him. I think, Chris, that'll be a situation when you get a guy nicked in a game like this where Auburn believes at some point in time they're going to be, the tide is going to turn and they're going to have their way in this. I think Holland, I would be surprised if we see him back in the game. Really? Even if it stays close? Yeah, I think you, you don't risk putting that racehorse off the edge in jeopardy for a game that's coming down the road next week. Second down run for Luckett, third down and medium. And as you look at the play that got him injured, he comes up lame in the middle of it. Yeah, and this is the third down play down inside the five-yard line, and Evans gets outside, tries to get him, and Holland goes to the ground and just gets up a little bit gimpy. He'd like to be out there for third down. Third and six. Evans on the roll. And he decides to throw it away. So fourth down and punt time as Nick Coe had the pressure from the end spot. And I believe Auburn, Kevin Still, the defensive coordinator in particular, feels that they can do that anytime it's a pass down. You have two. Defensive tackle stand up on the end. They rush five and they get pressure with five. They're covering with seven. And both of those things didn't work well for Caleb Evans. 30 sacks on the year for Auburn. Top 15 in the country. And Harrison Heim on the punt for ULM. No return from Roberts. Jared Stidham in the offense for number six, Auburn, when we come back. Wings it deep down the field. Passes. Oh! Touchdown! Johnson wide open. Bye bye. Touchdown, Auburn! Turn the lights up in Athens, Georgia. Evidently, they didn't pay their electric bill. In Athens, time to take a look at the college football playoff rankings brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Auburn is on the climb, hoping for maybe a Wisconsin loss or something else to go on involving Mercer or the Citadel. Yeah, and I think the thing to take away in that first look at that is the top seven teams really have a path to the playoffs. If they win out, I think all of those top seven have a chance to get there. They play each other. They will cross each other off the board, and Auburn is certainly one of those teams and would be the first two-loss team to get there in the final four. You get the win against Georgia. You have the Iron Bowl coming up. 
strength of record, strength of win loss starts to look really good for the Tigers who had that early loss to Clemson with Jared Stidham getting used to this offense after coming over from Baylor in junior college as carry on Johnson sets up a third down but the criteria are these conference championship strength of schedule head to head common opponent outcome. Yeah and these are these are the this is the criteria if you're comparing two fairly evenly matched teams and so that's the starting point and then there's that eye test that no one I've talked to can define it but um, I think Auburn's in great shape if they continue to play but right now ULM has something to say about that early in this one. There's a flag down free play. Stidham is tackled but Auburn will get five yards out of this it looks like. And Stidham may be a little dinged up as well. Offside defense number five five yard penalty. Repeat third down. It's Kerry starts the redshirt freshman. And Stidham is not really a great runner. He's he's more of a timely efficient runner and he can do some of that quarterback read stuff and zone read but then it's it's the avoidance of things when no one is open downfield he typically makes a good decision and this was a good decision to get Auburn in third and convertible right here. Only have to have one carry on Johnson is very good at that first down Auburn and you'd really like to have a healthy Jared Stidham who got rolled up on in the prior play. A good decision to take off with it and you know it doesn't take much when you're running and there's the 250 pound guy pursuing you and rolling an ankle or a knee. It's amazing it doesn't happen more often but it's right there the next couple steps that I guarantee you concern Gus Melzon and Chip Lindsay as their quarterback does that. How does that feel for a quarterback when you get up and you know something's a little yeah, wrong. You're hoping the first couple steps get you out of it but you're never guaranteed of that happening. Fake the toss. Stidham sideline and incomplete. Nice coverage by Offray to close on Davis. It's second down. And to be honest with you, this ball is a little bit late. Ryan Davis runs a seven route or a corner route, and it was there, and Offray broke on it and broke up the pocket, and the pass couldn't be completed. If there if that ball there is just a tick earlier, I think Davis has the chance to secure it. Davis in motion. Carry number 11 of quarter number one for carry on Johnson goes for two. Tyler Johnson the tackle and it's third down. Tell you what, ULM a little scary right now if you're an Auburn fan. Yeah, we're closing in on the first quarter. It's seven to seven, but the intangible things up front right now is Auburn's offensive line isn't consistently winning. And that's a matchup that I thought would be in favor of Auburn offensively and defensively. Third down for Stidham. Johnson has to beat a man to the sideline and couldn't do it. Wesley Thompson funneled him to the paint for Cisco and it's fourth down. You gone? <laughs> this is an interesting question. Typically, no. So if both teams are tell, doing what they said they would, play like we normally would, Gus Malzahn punts this away. We've got some time to think it over. End of the first quarter. Dead heat. War Hawks and War Eagle. This is a reveal of the college football playoff. Top 25 ranking 7 Eastern. Reese, the guys have it top to bottom. Coaches reactions live interview with committee chairman Kirby Hocutt. It's also streaming live on the ESPN app. Will Auburn still be in the top 10? Will the Tigers climb? It's up to them in three quarters against a feisty Warhawk group from Monroe, Louisiana. Gus Malzahn's team in a 7-7 tie after one quarter. Aiden Marshall who took over the job a couple weeks into the season with the punt and Marcus Green dives on it but ULM this is not shocking all right back in 2007 Auburn fans may like this they beat Nick Saban and 
his first season at Alabama 21 14 that five years later number eight Arkansas couldn't shake the Warhawks 34 31 Colton Browning you may remember uh, remember had the touchdown run to cap the upset so look Matt Viator's team is in good position right now 15 minutes and seven seconds in yeah, I think that first quarter went the way certainly that ULM would have wanted. And now ULM starts to believe as a team that, you know what? We can hang around and see what happens in this one. Gore, the Alabama transfer on a first down carry. And it's not only ULM in the hashtag fun belt. It's actually the no fun belt for some SEC teams. <laughs> Middle Tennessee State, Troy, Western Kentucky, some of the teams that are either currently in or were in the Sun Belt. Yeah, if you're going to pay a team to come and play, you uh, may want to rethink this group. This would be a million dollar plus victory for ULM if they came here, took the money and ran as they say. This pass is ill-fated because of Nick Coe and his paw in the air, third down. And that was the tunnel screen that was coming back inside, and that is, as they say, an extension of the run game. And ULM typically is effective, and what they do is they target the soft defender, and they can tunnel screen to either the outside receiver or the inside or, or middle receiver in that trips formation. Auburn's sack doctor Jeff Holland is back from the tent and ready to go on third down and eight. Evans sideline diving try for Green and he is there for a first down. Jason, we talked about this. The pass game has to show up in particular to number three, Marcus Green. What a tremendous catch. And I don't think he's any question that Green came down with it. What a great effort and what a timely conversion for ULM on this drive. Football 101, offensive play calling. Get it to your best guy and see what he can do. And there's a good example of it. So Holland comes back in and ULM gets itself first down. Green one more time. Second down coming up. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff Holland, the guy they call Sensei Mod, is back in there. Here's the backstory behind it. Auburn had someone come in this summer to teach him some martial arts and combat drills. They run through them during the pregame. The idea behind this is that it helps create separation and space. And Holland has become so good at this that he, that's why they call him Sensei Mud. He thinks he's good enough that he can teach the rest of the guys how to do it. And it's really caught on. Sensei, obviously a teacher of Japanese martial arts and mud is his usual nickname second down and a loss for ULM as we check in for the first time with Chris Cotter Time for an AT&T field pass and Jason you were talking about possibilities for Auburn down the road as far as the playoff is concerned well boy they're fans of Virginia today and Kurt Banker finding Joe Reed 75 yards downfield wide open 14 to nothing Wahoos right now in Miami. I thought that don't sleep on that team. You learn to win and winning matters. And that lesson Bronco Mendenhall was applying when we saw that team earlier this season. And a whistle before the snap. It's going to be a timeout. Prior to the snap, timeout. ULM. First time out of the half. Miami's got its own worries. So does Auburn. Welcome to the SEC on ESPN and welcome to danger time for the Auburn Tigers. How about that? 7 7 your score, quarter number two from Jordan Air Stadium. Don't forget tonight, 8 Eastern on ABC, number 11 USC and UCLA at the Coliseum. A couple of great quarterbacks, Rosen and Darnold. USC still in the college football playoff discussion as well. Duke Carter in a tailback on a third down for ULM. Out of the timeout and a flag's hit. Ball start, offense number two. Wow. Five yard penalty. It remains third down. You can't do those things. Matt, 
Vitor told us that you have to, not only do you, you're not going to have more talent in this game than the other people. So those things, the intangibles, the, the untimely penalties, you know, you can't turn it over. So now all of a sudden it's third and 12 and Kevin Still is going to get after you if you're Caleb Evans. Green is the big play guy in the slot, Marcus Green, and this goes the other direction with a lot of contact from Jamel Dean on Turner, who had the false start. Yeah, we've seen that matchup already, and Dean did get the personal or the uh, pass interference against Turner, and that time I think it was just tremendous coverage, and Caleb Evans and Turner tried the back shoulder throw, but Jamal, Jamel Dean was right in his shirt pocket. Auburn number six having some trouble today. Miami unbeaten and after those Notre Dame and Virginia Tech wins having some issues against the Wahoos. And we'll see what Wisconsin is doing from Chris Cotter. Getting some help on special teams, Jason Neal, in a game like this. Wisconsin and Michigan special teams are going to be huge. Nelson. Nick Nelson. Let's it take a bounce. Let's this punt take a bounce. Midfield. Almost it dies, but he picks up a midfield. Leaves his way around the defense along the right side. And then he has a wall of blockers in front of him. Seven to nothing right now. Wisconsin, early second quarter over Michigan. Miami comes back. Malik Rozier finds him on Richards for the score. So it's 14-7 now. Kane's coming back at home over on ABC. Interesting day, interesting noon Eastern time window for some of the top teams in college football as Jarrett Stidham starts again offensively. He has loved the screen to Davis today across the 40-yard line at a first down. Let's compare and contrast, shall we? Let's compare. Wisconsin unbeaten. Auburn two losses. Georgia just took the loss to Auburn. Notre Dame down at eight. What do you think? I think Notre Dame, you need to just take off the screen because that dog isn't going to haunt. I think the other three have an opportunity. There isn't any doubt. I think the other three, if they win out, have a path to the playoffs. I mean, an undefeated Wisconsin team and a Big Ten champion is going to be in the playoffs. A two-loss Auburn team is also going to be in the playoffs, and Georgia could be that opponent in the SEC championship game against Auburn as well. Carry on Johnson. Finds a lane and Johnson inside the 45. He may be the guy to steer the Auburn train today against ULM. Penalties will blow out your tires, though. Prior to snap, ball start. Offense number three. Five-yard penalty. It remains second down. Let's do some numbers on the college football playoff and see who has Let's the best chance to win out and make it to the college football playoff. If you are a multiple loss team, which Auburn is, 91% chance if they win out. Yeah, I think Auburn is certainly in that driver's seat because of who they have ahead of them to be one of those final four in the college football playoff. I don't think there's anything standing in their way it's just a matter of them attending to their or tending to their business Eli Stove gets lit up Marcus Hubbard was right on that and that's that behind the line of scrimmage screen and Nate Craig Myers is the receiver that's supposed to be out there blocking he didn't do a very good job and ULM blew it up on that one Second down and long for Jarrett Stidham, who completed his first seven, but does have an interception today. Carry on Johnson in space, and he just ducks with four white jerseys coming after him. And Mason Husband, the redshirt freshman, got up and was trying to exhort his sideline for even more energy. Yeah, that's an indication of how they feel this game is going, but that was a really good maintenance play. Second and long because of the good defensive play by Marcus Hubbard leads to this right here in a certainly a manageable down and distance. Stidham. Deep ball. Sideline. Incomplete. Slayton couldn't get the foot in. 
And actually, I had the wrong line of scrimmage, still third and 13. And does Slayton get that foot in? Is the right foot, left foot's definitely out. Was the ball in possession when the right foot was down, which I thought there was a possibility of that happening. But third and 13, Auburn goes vertical. And ULM had decent coverage. That ball was faded too far outside. I think that's a good call. That right foot was up when the ball was possessed. Left foot went down out of bounds. Fair catch for Green with his heels on the 15-yard line. 9.41 to go first half. Gus Malzahn's team in a deadline. ESPN College Football, brought to you by the Lexus December to Remember sales event. Offers available for a limited time. And Modelo Especial, brewed with a fighting spirit since 1925. Those are all the non-scholarship players for the Auburn Tigers who have at least a volume advantage over ULM today. The Warhawks, though, are staying close. A lot of guys over on that sideline, and Chris Button was telling us during the break that uh, there's some laughing going on, some excitement still, not downtrodden, as we check in for an Alabama update with Chris Cotter. Okay, guys, this has gotten ugly early. We're already talking about substitute senior for Nick Saban's club. Tua Tagovailoa finding Hale Hentges tight end, 35 to nothing tied, early second quarter on the SEC Network. Well, the Iron Bowl is coming up. That's that's the kind of game Auburn would like to have right now. But if you win the Iron Bowl, you're pretty much going to the national championship game, whatever it's called at the time. Another reverse. Green on the run and out of bounds short of the 25 with an escort from Jeremiah Dinson. I, this is amazing, isn't it? It really is. You win the Iron Bowl. You go to the national championship game with the exception of 2014 and the Alabama Crimson Tide. That's coming up for Auburn. That's what's ahead. But there's some trouble right now brewing at home against ULM. Yeah, even though there's no panic on the sideline, I can see the Auburn players trying to get this crowd going. They're not into it either here in the stadium. And ULM is needing to convert once again to an extended drive on third and certainly manageable. Auburn rushes five, doesn't get there off the tip. It is brought in R.J. Turner. Flag has come in as well in the defensive backfield. I think it's going to be pass interference, but R.J. Turner nonetheless comes down with the ball anyway. Matched up outside with Carlton Davis. The ball's pass batted up. Defense number six. That penalty will be declined. First down. As you can hear, it was pass interference. Davis came over the back early of Turner, but great job of focusing on the ball all the way through and catching that when a Turner comes down with a complete catch. That's pretty good stuff. Those are the plays you have to make if you're going to stay in this one as long as you possibly can, and ULM wants to have a chance in the second half. Luckett on a first down run. ULM practiced with a silent count all week because they were expecting this place to be loud, but honestly, only about one or two times on third down have the fans really been into it. Right now, no fans cheering. It's been pretty quiet down here. And Ben Luck at the injured party right now for ULM, but I, if you're Matt Viator, you've got exactly what you want yeah. out of this game so far. He's pulled off upsets at McNeese State. He's in line for it here today early. and the college football playoffs. Ah, but there's a fly in the ointment today as Matt Viator's ULM team is tied with Auburn, and when he was at McNeese State, he made life very difficult for some Power 5 schools. UNC nearly took a loss, Nebraska, and they beat USF 53-21. Second down, seven from the 33. After the catch from Turner, Evans straight up the middle. We have not seen that yet today. And Evans just short of midfield with a first down run. Tackle for Roberts. 
And when ULM was looking for a quarterback, that's exactly what was first on the list is a quarterback that has speed in the, the feel of the run game. And Caleb Evan has that. I was on the field before the game, and he certainly looks the part. And the more experience and reps this young man has gotten, the better feel he's gotten. Pocket presence in the pass game, but also a feel in the run game. Look, he's a scrapper. He comes from a family of nine, eight siblings. Evans on the roll again, nearly intercepted, almost picked by Javaris Davis. And had room to run. Avoided in the pocket, got outside to the right, and Caleb Evans had room to run, and that was a bad decision and a poorly thrown ball that could have been one of those things that turned the tide to Auburn. Look at that ball is behind him. It gives the defender time to slice underneath the receiver and Brown almost came up with it, or that was intended to Brown and the defender almost came up with it. Caleb Evans has a brother playing in the CFL right now. Gerard on the Packers practice squad as well in the NFL. And that is a big lick on Derek Gore. Montavious Atkinson was in there along with Davis. Yeah, Atkinson slices across on that second level. And I think that's the tough matchup. The offensive lineman a lot of times in that zone scheme, you double team the defensive line, but then you have to disengage and a lineman gets up to the linebackers. Well, Auburn, Auburn linebackers are flying to the football and that's a tough matchup. Auburn rushes five. Evans nowhere to go and down he goes. Davis the sack. And Davis is that extra rusher because you get into a third and pass down against Kevin Steele and you're going to get something. You're going to typically get someone added to the rush and that's 57 in this case. And there's only four, but the fourth one is a guy that you didn't know whether Davis was going to be coming or not. And then Caleb Evans has to understand you're not always going to avoid these guys. Throw the ball out of bounds and save your team some yardage. Roberts, the fair catch, and that hit an Auburn player and goes rolling out of bounds. That was Javaris Davis who got conked with the punt, and luckily for the Tigers, that thing found its way to the sideline. Not exactly the championship urgency Gus Malzahn was talking about, a little pinball job, and we're tied in the second quarter. Jared Stidham and his team tied at seven, and Chris Button has been downstairs listening in. Chris, what are you hearing? Yeah, Stidham went over to all everyone on the offensive line trying to encourage them to get in this. It's been interesting. I've been watching the coaches, though, too. Gus Malzahn came over, was very calm. No one has really lit these guys up. So, Kelly, my question would be to you. I mean, I know it's still early, and you don't want to push the panic button, but at what point do you want to see more fire out of your guys? Now. I think now. There isn't any question about it on both sides of the football they definitely need more energy does Auburn well what they just got on that play was what they call a fire alarm those short huddles they yeah. do that's the signal for it so at least the alarms ringing if the fire yeah. shows up they'll be in good shape they better answer the bell Chip Lindsay said that that's one of the things that Gus Melzon has taught him the use of that some people call it a sugar huddle they call it a fire alarm that huddle that hides a formation in personnel and you break quickly and you snap it quickly as well. The fire alarm needs to go off like Chris said and I like the fact that the quarterback is the one in the middle of that saying guys we have to get it done right now. This is ridiculous. Second down run and look there's been a learning curve here for Jared Stidham with this offensive coordinator who he in fact wasn't even recruited by Chilinzi at least here. Yeah at least here he was recruited by him at Arizona State and then Stidham decides to come here and then Rhett Lashley is out and Chip Lindsay is in and it's a new offense and it's a completely different offense than what Stidham was doing with Art Browse at Baylor. It's a completely different thing. There are progressions. It's a new language. And it took about three games to feel comfortable. And then Stidham has progressed nicely since then. 
Auburn picks up the rush, and this is incomplete. Offre wanted a pick six. Offre had one. He jumped the quick out route from Stidham to Slayton, and this could have been standing in the end zone as we speak. The ball was on time, but the coverage was fantastic, and Offre, it was a little bit high and hard and outside, but Offre might have been standing in the end zone. Hard to believe with only seven points on the board, but this is the first three and out today for Auburn. And Auburn hasn't exactly been a juggernaut in the second half, so we'll talk about that as time goes on as well. Off the punt from Marshall, Green steps up on it at midfield. Chris Cotter. Let's check out what's happening down in Miami. This game has been nip and tuck throughout. Miami punting here, as you can see, down by seven points. Special teams. We've already shown you in a couple of games, special teams have played a huge role. Miami gets the ball back. Wouldn't you know it? Rozier's second touchdown pass of the day. Goes right up top to Dale Harris. Miami and Virginia all tied up on ABC. You know what, they do that, but but they have won every game, so you have to put them at least top three, right? I mean, with the schedule they've played, but they would not compare favorably with a loss. Yeah, and ironically, they play down to their opponent, and the irony is you learn how to win games like that, which is sometimes not all that great of a lesson. You'd rather win big. Evans down the middle, incomplete for R.J. Turner. What do you make of the top four right now? Who for you has the best chance of staying there? Wow, I think, I mean, they all have really tough games. The two in the middle are going to meet each other in the ACC championship game. I think probably Oklahoma at this point in time has the best path to remain there. And I actually think Oklahoma should have already been above Miami. And we know that Alabama comes here next week in the Iron Bowl. If Auburn can take care of business today, as Alabama is already against Mercer, that's going to be a heck of a football game. Evans the fake toss and he scrambles across the 45 third down and manageable as Roberts makes the tackle but Caleb Evans who had 403 total yards of offense last time out against App State and that's a team that's very tough to beat in the Sun Belt doesn't Michigan know it Auburn played their best football last week against Georgia well guess what ULM played their best game against App State last week as well both in their respective conferences and ULM has momentum on their side in their own way also out of Monroe Louisiana the Warhawks under three and a half to go first half Evans to the outside and Brown who sits down for a first down in this spread system, you spread them out, and Brown was the outside receiver. There was a slant inside in the slot. Brown ran a slant outside, and then Evans just picks which one has the most softness. In this case, it was a completion to Brown to convert, and guess who's still possessing the football? Their touchdown drive was 5 minutes, 32 seconds. Evans on the roll. Holland after him, and he uncorks it toward the band. Jason, we've seen that a few times where ULM wants to play action pass to that speed motion concept and then get Evans outside. And I think he's very good outside, but you're being chased by a different level of athlete here today than Evans is used to in the Sunbelt Conference. Who was the guy in the NFL that you thought, oh, this is a different dude? Lawrence Taylor yeah. bloodied my lip a few times. <laughs> yeah, he, he jumps right out. He was even at the latter part of his career, but he could still get after it. They were on the fake toss this time. Jeff Holland had first contact. And a little post-play action involving Dontavious Russell and Bobby Reynolds, the center for ULM. Well, this has been the money down, and it typically is when... Kevin still the defensive coordinator from Auburn can get you in third in a passing down all bets are off and you don't win many of those one on ones up front if you're ULM so you got to get your quarterback on the move and you got to get rid of this ball quickly. Trey Matthews up at the line Evans to throw dropped again 
Brian Williams this time with Davis behind him. It's fourth down decision time with 2.09 to go in the half. I think ULM is punting it and going to be happy where they are in this game. But that was a great example of ULM being coached well. ULM was anticipating pressure offensively. They had a man-beating route, which was a crossing route to Williams. He beats Carlton Davis, but it was just a poorly thrown ball on the back hip. If that ball's on the front hip, William runs out the backside and may get all the way to the end zone. Remember, after halftime, ULM gets the football. Auburn had it first. And Heim sends it out of bounds inside the five. At halftime, what do we have, Chris Cotter? All right, gentlemen, we've got Chip Kelly and Jaza Doma here in the studio. Dave and Buster's halftime report. Wisconsin in a battle right now against Michigan, as you might expect. Not so much for Alabama. They're pretty much housing Mercer. We're going to have highlights of those two games, plus a look at the rest of the games today, including the Dogs trying to come back between the hedges in Saturday's slate. It's all coming up. Dave and Buster's halftime report. Guys, we'll see you then. Well, Connor, we told you there was going to be a lot of offense in this game after the two opening touchdown drives. Now we've had seven Nothing. punts and a pick. Gone dormant. It's winter in Nebraska right here. <laughs> Carry on Johnson zigs outside and to the sideline just short of the 20-yard line with three timeouts remaining for Auburn. Maybe they can fix this ugly drive chart. Yeah, Gus Malzahn obviously was very happy with drive number one, and then it's about ULM adjusting and Auburn not really attending to their business as well as they could have, but get it to carry on Johnson more is the order of the day. Still no plays of 40-plus, and Stidham goes short to medium to Darius Slayton for another first down. Great work on the two-minute situation, three timeouts, and it's textbook so far. Running play, see what you get, reevaluate the drive, and then get the ball out quickly on play number two. They do have a great kicker in Daniel Carlson in case of field goal need as Stidham goes down the middle. And this is a totally different looking offense as Will Hastings has this one in midfield. Yeah, well timed. And Cortez Cisco was the linebacker that was trying to get underneath that route, and he was just a little bit late. Pace now for Auburn. Stidham in rhythm. Watch the sideline. Deep ball, Slayton. Well, Darius Slayton is that guy. He gets vertical, he gets by slaughter, but it's going up and competing for the football late. He did the same thing in an important time. I think the game last week against Georgia was 9-7, to seven, and Slayton makes a play like that on the goal line where he goes up, competes for it, snatches it. Timely once again here today against ULM. Four plays, 96 yards, under 40 seconds for Stidham to Slayton. And Stidham can hose the ball down the field. He let Slayton run. I mean, let the horse out to run, and then can you reach him? And Stidham did, and it was a beautiful pass. Really good protection because this is a long time in the making, but watch the spin on this one. Step up in, climb a couple steps. That extra step was about Slayton getting a little bit further behind Slaughter on the on the other end, and then Slayton goes up and just snatches the football. That's a thing of beauty. Here's a guy in Jared Stidham who transferred from Baylor after the Art Briles situation. He broke his ankle as well after he came in for an injury replacement situation, spent a year away from football. He was running the scout team at a local high school in Waco. By the way, he couldn't leave Imagine Waco. Imagine that, a yeah. scout team on high school. He couldn't leave Waco because he was still paying rent. He had a lease through May after the Baylor situation. So Stidham is running the scout team at a high school. You know he loves the game oh, if he's yeah. doing that, right? Oh, no doubt. And to not play the quarterback position for 400-plus days, Days. It is an automatic as you just come back without rust, and we saw that early in the year. Plus, he's learning a, really a new system, completely new in terms of what's being asked of him. But I hope people can appreciate the path that that young man took. It was an automatic. He wanted to play in Baylor and do his thing for his entire career. That didn't work out. You set out for 400 days. You come back, and here he is. 
has his team on the cusp of playing for the college football playoff. Marcus Green lets it sit in the end zone. I mean, what do you do with your days, though, is the question when you're taking online classes, Chris Button. Well, the key for him was maintaining the same type of schedule that he would have during a football season. So he'd wake up in the morning, he'd get an early workout in, then he'd do his classes, all basically from his pajamas, because he did all online classes. Then he'd go do run the scout team QB at the local high school. He would also meet with a nutritionist, come back, and even watch film. The idea was that if he made maintain the same kind of schedule that it would be easier to kind of get back into the swing of things when he eventually found a new school. You see not down say pajamas. No, that's not what he said exactly. <laughs> but uh, he, you can see the charisma on the sideline and the yeah. love for the game. He's just kind of mimicking what he did on that deep ball as ULM would serve itself very well by getting a first down because Auburn can burn some timeouts and try and get this back before halftime with ULM getting the ball after the half. Well, Steedham showed us that Time charisma out. yesterday. Over. He's a first time out of the half. He's exactly what this offense for Gus Melzon was looking for. Please and added to Chip Lindsay, and you have an block. offense that's balanced, and you have a dude that can hose the ball. That was about 55 yards in the air, and you have Thank a guy you. that can go up and finish a play at the other end in Slayton. Jared Stidham, who? This is a 30 second timeout. Chris Button, he was in his boxers in a t shirt, <laughs> right? Dudes don't wear pajamas. <laughs> Especially if you're paying rent in Waco and you have nothing better to do. Listen, I didn't want to go into detail about exactly was, but boxers are kind of pajamas, right? A form of? Sure. Yeah, I guess. We just don't use that term. Especially quarterbacks, you know. We've got a reputation to uphold, and wearing pajamas and doing online classes doesn't cover it. You don't have footy pajamas at home at the I, ranch? I don't. All right. I'm not Second down at 12. There with you. Second and 12. Under a minute and a half, first half, and a key sequence for ULM to try to keep the ball away from Auburn. Evans on the run, seeking the outside. He gets there, and that was a big run. He's out of bounds, third down and short. That was a timely run and a great look at what Evans can do on that quarterback draw. And now all of a sudden with a minute 17 and a timeout, ULM is thinking initially, don't give it right back to Auburn. And now I'm thinking, you know what? We have a chance to get points of our own. This is a very important down in this game, though. If they do not get the two yards, they've saved Auburn at least one timeout by going out of bounds. Yeah, I, I think that's a great point, but you're thinking points yourself right here. White gets hit hard, and he is very close. Deshaun Davis just absolutely wrecking balled him, but they do get the first down. And it was the extra effort because Davis collisioned White just short, and then White was able to finish on contact and convert. That was highly important right here. Now Evans to throw. Incomplete. Dean on the coverage of Williams. Second down. You know, Jason, we talked about this. You know, we knew that ULM offensively was so well coached and they have some great concepts. They can attack defenses specifically. But the question is, can you come up enough with enough of those type of plays in order to get enough points to win here? They're not here to just hang around. They're here to have a chance to win it in the fourth quarter, and you have to make plays, and right here on this drive is a good example. That's the playmaker, Green, into the backfield. They shifted him. Holland pursuing, and Green whipped down by Jeremiah Dinson. So third down coming up, and a timeout called by Auburn. With only one down before fourth, timeout. they're thinking, get Auburn. it back again. This is oscillated multiple times on this drive. I think ULM was, after that play, willing to let the air out, and Auburn says, you know what, now we have a chance to get it back and have timeouts to try to do that. But if you're ULM, you know that your wheelhouse is this side of the ball when the offense is controlling it. Yeah, and they run it first. And they've done that successfully. We've seen the quarterback draw be an extension of that run game. And then it's the screen pass. And 
but they still are going to have to get something out of the pass game at times and their pass game a lot of times is the run pass option so it has literally a run built in you focus on one defender Caleb Evans the quarterback has to make him wrong determine if he steps up I pass behind him if he is soft I run it but I, I just question where those plays are going to come from. Their big play guy is Marcus Green in the explosives, but Marcus Green doesn't take the field in the Sun Belt again against what this defense from Auburn presents. Five touches today for Green. Third down and eight. ULM five for ten on third down. Green out of the backfield, little wheel route across the 45. You know that where is Waldo or where is Marcus Green that time he's coming out of the backfield and he ends up running a wheel route and then Caleb Evans recognizes the good coverage wheel routes typically down the field and the quarterback put it on him quickly on that one Holland coming Evans steps up and Evans gets finally ripped down Dontavius Russell and Jeff Holland there together and ULM burning their last time out Timeout. and that's a good example ULM of the difference with Auburn's half. defensive this speed and what Caleb Evans is typically used to Evans did the right thing was going to escape to the left but it was cut off immediately and there was nowhere to go so let me ask you 22 seconds here you get the ball out of halftime how do you handle these next couple of plays it's all about second and 11 if you can make something happen here where you get in third and manageable or convert then you try to make something happen you could throw it into the end zone a couple times if nothing else hey week 11 Sunday NFL countdown 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN biggest blunders in NFL history plus Randy Moss best catches for the weekend in college football you got Moss Biggest NFL. blunders in NFL history? Yeah. I might be on that. You think so? I could. Which one? My first touchdown pass in my career, I shattered my nose via my own running back, got knocked to the ground, got up and threw a post pass, post pattern for my first touchdown for 55 yards. It depends on your perspective. It's a great play or it's a blunder. We, Good know. job sniffing out the route. Yeah, no. <laughs> 22 <laughs> seconds to go first half. Evans sideline man to man coverage and Williams defended well by Dean third down and I think ULM has tried to pick on Dean a little bit here today and Williams is a 6 4 dude and tried to catch that ball with his feet on the ground that isn't the way you finish you have to go up and compete for those 50 50 balls which is what that was and Williams didn't make a very good effort to finish that play be careful right here Caleb Evans. You're going to run it maybe in the I half? I think so. Yeah, in the half. Auburn does have the one timeout. Unlikely they would use it. Quick hitter out of the backfield, and this is a live ball for now. Now they call it incomplete. White dropped it, and that's with the new usage of instant replay this decade. The instruction to officials on a ball that's close to a backward pass is let it play out if you're on the fence because replay can correct that. Yeah, you're you're all over it, and that's that's what happened. And that was a run play. That's an extension of the run game. Uh, should be a hundred percent completion on a swing to a running back, and White couldn't catch the kind of high hot one from his quarterback Caleb, Caleb Evans. Heim with 10 seconds to go in the half. Auburn comes, Heim gets it away. And this goes spinning back to the 24. Two seconds left, Auburn has one play. Stidham can chuck it now. He can chuck it, and I think, why not try it? This is a long ways though, this is, what is it be a 75 yarder to get it anywhere close, but you know, we've seen some strange bounces with balls batted up in the air in this stadium before, right? That is true. That is very true. Trey Matthews might have been a part of that for a different team. Don't think Auburn wants any stray caroms in this game. They'd rather straight line it to a victory, but that has not worked terribly well so far. ULM clinging to Auburn. 14-7 your score at halftime. And coming up after the break, it's the Dave and Buster's Halftime Report. Chris Cotter leads you through it after this. 
Upper Chris Button after the kick. And look, when you're a two-loss team, you have to show close to perfection, you would think. So how does Auburn do that in the second half? Well, it's the championship urgency that we heard about from Gus Malzahn incessantly, right? Yeah. And that we didn't see that in the first half. And I don't know that ULM is going to be shooed away. You have to make plays. Auburn's defense adjusted. After that first drive with ULM got the touchdown, it was a lot of nothing out of them offensively. And so it's about what Auburn does offensively themselves. They were inefficient on kind of the money downs. How do you extend drives? And they didn't do a very good job of that. All right, time for the Cabela's game track. And we take a look at some of that offensive issue for UL Monroe, ULM. At first drive, 75 yards and a touchdown since then, 32 for 58 yeah, and whole, five punts. Whole bunch of nothing. And Stidham has been efficient. And carry on Johnson has over five yards of pop, something in that neighborhood. And ULM had a really nice drive, and then they had five drives with a whole bunch of uh, Auburn defenders chasing them down. So I still question that ULM has enough big plays in them to make this happen, but at halftime, they're where they want to be. One of their dangerous players, Marcus Green, back to receive this kickoff. He has brought three to the house this year. This one is a touchback. Kelly, Jason, you get one guess what Gus Malzahn told me at halftime. It's two words, championship urgency. He was not pleased with the amount of energy that his team was playing with, hoping that they can draw off that last scoring drive. Matt Vietor, meanwhile, for ULM, was telling me, we can't win this game unless we can stay on the field, so they have to stay out of second and third and long. I want Chris's definition of championship urgency to be back on the screen at some point because I'm pretty sure what I saw on the field in that first half was not exactly what that definition described. It was sunny right around kickoff. It's gotten cloudy and windy, maybe foretelling a tough second half for Auburn to get rid of ULM. And you asked for the championship urgency, you get it. There it is. Do a little more because you're on the verge of something special and there was a whole lot of less then more in that first half and it was mainly I think on that on that offensive side for Auburn they just couldn't make the plays to extend drives and get points late decision on the run pass option it's Derek Gore up ahead to the 45 so it was either quarterback run or running back run and Gore takes it all the way just short of midfield and that late decision is what actually made the play the extended mesh point with Caleb Eben. Evans gave the running back that room up inside. Evans on the run this time, and he finds his way right around midfield. So Caleb Evans, who we told you his brother, Gerard, former Virginia Tech starting quarterback, now on the practice squad of the Green Bay Packers. Caleb Evans knows how to battle for some things. He was one of nine children growing up. He said meals were very difficult. You went for <laughs> quantity over quality because you didn't get guaranteed a second plate. Enchilada night was difficult. On a quick hitter for Green, so third down coming up. Very athletic family, the Evans family. They also have a brother, Nathaniel, who was diagnosed with cerebral palsy. Caleb certainly helps take care of Nathaniel who's gotten to see some of Caleb's games in history as well and Gerard you know about his success at Virginia Tech and now learning from Aaron Rodgers at Green Bay and Brett Hundley pressure coming Evans floats it to the sideline on third down Caleb Evans told me that his desire to go out and play hard every day is because of his younger brother, Nathaniel, that because he doesn't have the opportunity to go out and play football like Caleb does, that he wants to give it his all. One other side note, he said the best athlete in the family is the little sister. She's seven. <laughs> She's a soccer oh player. Can she play quarterback? Everybody else can. Yeah, that is amazing. Yeah, an athletic family to say the least. But great story about his brother Nathaniel and playing for him. Roberts lets it bounce and Haim has had a very nice day. He's put a second one 
inside the five. 14-7 start of the second half. Told you Auburn's a two-loss team. The reason is a game that they really felt like they should have had, and rightfully so, up 20 to nothing over LSU. But Russell Gage with a long touchdown catch brought LSU back. Then DJ Chark, the punt return that really changed the game. It goes for 75 yards and a touchdown. Stidham sacked by Arden Key to end it. And LSU ends up winning, and Gus Malzahn caught some heat, along with Chip Lindsey, for 17 consecutive first down runs in that game. And so we were talking to them about that yesterday as carry on Johnson has a first down run up ahead to the 10 and there's some push and pull with Malzahn and Lindsay but part of it is not only that they were runs on 17 straight plays on first down but it's a type of run right yeah some of those were RPOs and we'll talk more about it after this play. Again, they hit the screen for Davis and a first down Auburn. And some of them were RPOs, which is literally a run pass option, and it's 50-50, which is going to be. And, and then the pass game for Auburn currently is a vertical pass game. There isn't a lot of outlet receivers to be had. Jason, the other part of that is some of the intangible things that begin to happen. It was about not finishing plays that were there to be made, and the players acknowledge that. And it's really the second half started somewhat like this. Auburn was backed up on their first offensive possession like they were here. They didn't get a first down, and LSU got great field position and ended up going in for a touchdown, and all bets were off at that point. It's overall an improved offense, and as Gus Malzahn told us yesterday, look, if, if we don't allow a couple things to happen in that game like that punt return, we're not having this discussion because the offense has been very strong this year. Yeah, but you don't call plays based on what you hope doesn't happen. You keep the pedal to the metal and, and play your game. And running the ball 17 times on first down in a row, and some of them were RPOs, typically can put you in a bad second or third pass down, and those are hard to, to complete against a defense like LSU. They were 19 passes, 18 runs in the first half, and this is a breakdown of the barrier by Carrion Johnson. Cortez Cisco got taken for a trip. Yeah, and that's what Auburn intends to do right here. How agile is Carrion Johnson? He changes direction so quickly. Yeah, he has loose hips. You don't know really what you're going to tackle. You go up and you target the hips, and it seems like a bowl of jelly, and he's going the other direction. But it's the attitude right now on the offensive line of scrimmage that we see on this drive that we did not see a whole lot in the first half out of Auburn. Hard to say a quiet 104 for Carrion Johnson, but it has been something of a quiet 104 because it hadn't didn't lead to anything in that first half. Carry on Johnson again. Breaks away. Oh, he set that up with Offre so beautifully to step out of the tackle on a first down for 21. One of the special things about this special running back is the feet. I mean, his feet stay under him, and he is moving in the right direction all the time. Forward. Usually forward, he finishes the run going forward, which is indicative of a special running back, and Kerryon Johnson is that. Cam Martin has checked in for Johnson for this down as they do try to keep that pitch count somewhat reasonable for Johnson, although Kerryon Johnson says he'll run until... The day is over. Cam Martin finds some space. Martin to the one yard line. And the change of running backs brings a different angle to the defense. And Cam Martin's more of a speed guy than Johnson is. Martin again. Does finish for Auburn, touchdown on a late signal. Jason, what did uh, Gus Melzon tell Chris going off the field at halftime? Something about, uh, we didn't play 
well in the first half, but I guarantee you we will in the second. And that drive was indicative of probably about as fiery a speech as you will get a, out of Gus Malzahn at halftime in that locker room. Saw him clapping on the sideline even trying to pump his team up. And the running backs and the offensive line certain heard the SEC leading rusher, Carry on Johnson, puts it in play for Cam Martin, who got him down to the one yard line only to punch it in. Auburn expands the lead. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Northwestern Mutual, we help you live life differently. And Modelo Especial, brewed with a fighting spirit since 1925. One of the best athletes of all time, Bo Jackson. That was Two my sports. alumni pick of the week. On our ESPN app, our 90-second yearbook feature where we all pick an alum, some better than others. Yeah, that, that was a pretty good pick right there. Frank Thomas, also a former Auburn Tiger. Chris Button went entertainment as the wind has decided to stop the kickoff. Well, we've seen that championship urgency twice. Opening drive of the game and the opening drive of this half. Champions maintain that for an entire game. We'll see how the second half plays out. Touchback and Auburn's defense will be down a man. Trey Williams, the senior linebacker, is off the field, Chris. Yeah, when he came off the field after that last series, his head was down. They were actually having to hold his head up. He went into the medical tent. He is now off the field and into the locker room being evaluated. They're telling me that it's a shoulder injury. It's the same shoulder that he has been battling for the second half of the season. As soon as I get more information, I'll let you guys know. Thank you, Chris. Former Under Armour All-American Trey Williams out of Mobile, who was behind some great linebackers, Chris Frost included, the past couple of years. As ULM starts on an important drive, down a couple of scores with Gore and a short game. And certainly, Gus Melzon wants to come out of this game healthy. They want to look sharper than they did in that first half collectively. And Troy Williams is one of those guys at that second level. When Kevin Steele was hired as a D coordinator a couple of years ago, they didn't have a lot of experience out of that group. But out of Atkinson and Williams and Davis and Darrell Williams, those guys have played a lot of ball in the last couple of years. Russell coming. Pressure was there. This ball is nearly picked off by Jeremiah Dinson. Third down coming up. And Marcus Green was open. They had the right play called. It was going up the seam. And that pressure on Caleb Evans moved the ball out to the right. If I stick that right over top of that inside safety's head on number three, we have a play. But it was the pressure on the other end that was happening at the same time. And the receiver, Green, throws his hands up in the air, but he didn't realize his quarterback was getting hit upside the head. Third down, seven. Evans is out of bounds. Derek Brown took him to the sideline. Fourth down, and you can't really think about going for it here, can oh, you? Absolutely not. And it was interesting on that play. Derek Brown, you called his name number five. He has a tiny number, but he's a big man. And that's what you see in the SEC. 320-pound dude chasing the quarterback that has speed out on the perimeter. You don't see that in many places in college football, but we just saw it there. That's the difference in athlete from Sunbelt to SEC. No doubt about it. Heim to Roberts. And Roberts now has to dance out of the way at the last moment. ULM thought about taking it in, but it was blown dead. So 21-7 Auburn with the lead. Close here.
Allstate proud to be part of the team that comes together to do good by contributing to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. To date, Allstate has contributed millions in scholarship funds. We've done the extra point thing today, but not the field goal thing with Auburn holding a two-score advantage over ULM. A little bit of a chancy morning and afternoon now for highly ranked teams across college football as we check in on what's going on with Chris Cotter. Well, one of those highly ranked teams is in big trouble right now. Kurt Bankert is having a huge game, 18 of 19, 288 yards and four touchdowns, including this one to Daniel Ham. It's a 14-point lead in the third quarter for Virginia on ABC. Kurt Ben Kurt, who has high confidence in his receivers, spent a lot of time with them in the offseason, building that confidence and maybe having the win of his career at UVA. Cam Martin squeezes through another hole for an Auburn first down. And Auburn is using a much more pace in this second half than they did in the first half. And I think that's working well. And Martin brings a different pace to the running back position than carry on Johnson does. Martin is dumped and what a great story. Cam Martin he's from Port Arthur, Texas. Hurricane Harvey came through and he was just up all night every night constantly trying to get a hold of his family and talk to them make sure everything's OK. Some of his family had to go to Austin and elsewhere and some of his family got into a truck and just said, you know what, we need to make sure Cam knows everything's all right. So they drove up for the first game here after the hurricane as this one goes out wide to Eli Stowe. But uh, a young man who had much more on his mind and such a family oriented kid, Cam Martin, and kind of a neat story. Yeah, that is a neat story and another story that has to do with a lot on the plate of college student athletes in the middle of a season and things like that they have to deal with. It's pretty impressive. Stidham, miscommunication. That was going to be a back shoulder throw, and you're right. Stidham was anticipating back shoulder and Slayton didn't get the memo. We were talking uh, about how much is on the plate of these kids with Kevin Steele, the, the defensive coordinator for Auburn yesterday. And he said, look, with all the social media and everything, the toughest thing to coach is focus and consistency. Yeah, it's amazing. And the attention span, I think, has gone out the window because of those very things. And it's hard to keep their attention to teach them what they need to learn. Green driven back to the 15. And he's up across the 20 yard line. Talk about Kevin Steele and who he's coached with. I mean, big name schools, LSU and Alabama and Tennessee a couple of times. And he also coached a, a, a team that Kelly Stoffer was on. Yeah, he was with Coach Osborne in Nebraska. That's, I have a history with Kevin to some extent. He was a linebacker coach when I was with the Carolina Panthers. And we had some visits about the Nebraska football days then. But imagine. The school you can go to under those guys that he had a chance to be under and he is a guy that soaks it all in as well. He's a student of the game and he's applying it. Keep it simple. Let your best guys play fast and Auburn has done that and it was lights out. One of the most elite defensive games I've seen last week against Georgia. Garrett Smith is checked in at quarterback for ULM. Evans is out so Smith the former starter is into the ball game 49 passes deep this season. He started the first 10 back in 2015. Evans won the job and Kevin Steele actually said look I thought I was going to end up planning for him because I was pretty impressed by him <laughs> when we saw him last year but Smith lost the job to Evans and now has it back at least for now. Two runs for him to start. By the way, Kevin Steele up there in the booth. That's a that's a packed house up there in the oh, coaches the booth place. for Auburn, Chip Lindsay, and the radio crew and everybody. And what you get up in that booth is you get the defensive guys are on one level, the offensive guys are on another. There's that separation between the two. And 
Right now, Kevin still is trying to stop this new quarterback as he started to game plan for this one in advance. He didn't think he'd be facing Smith. On the roll, Holland was there. He uncorked it. Smith did to Williams, who's got the first down. Important catch, and Williams gets dumped on his head outside. And Jeremiah Dinson is down for Auburn, a young man who has had two ugly injuries in his football career. Well-placed throw, and Denson goes low on Williams. And it looks like Denson gets the worst of that collision. Remember what is coming here next week. An Alabama team in the Iron Bowl that is banged up themselves. This game might be a matter of attrition, and Auburn was in pretty good shape, but they've had some dings today. Alabama playing early, dispatching Mercer. What else is going on? Chris Connor. Want to update you on Miami because these two teams are going back and forth. Told you about the kind of day that Kurt Bankert is having. Malik Rozier, this is his third touchdown pass of the day as well. Cager picks it up, so it's 28-21 right now in the third. Miami, we had that Carolina game as you're talking about. They, they can't seem to figure out how to blow somebody out right now. At least a team that they should blow out. At least they did with Notre Dame, which was interesting. But you're right. I mean, we, we had the North Carolina game, Miami, North Carolina, and all bets were off going into the latter stages of that one. And that's usually not a sign of a great team. Yeah. And that's what I like about Alabama. And, and don't argue with Alabama, even though their schedule's been weak. They have dispatched everybody on their schedule like they should. Denson still down. We'll step aside. 21-7 Auburn. Jeremiah Denson to the sideline. So Holland has been out. Trey Williams is out currently. Denson, the starting nickel, has gone out. And for an Auburn team that would like to, at some point, possibly today, rest its starters, it's happening in the wrong way. The ULM is not really letting them unleash that plane currently. Smith to the 35. ULM did have an extra week with a bye to prepare for Auburn. However, the Tigers would like to put something a little bit more in the way of separation on the board. No doubt about it. And remember, you have the college football playoff committee that is always watching at this point in time. And even though this is a game that Auburn should, you know, the line was like 36 points or something, and it's always an open audition if you're a team in that playoff push. Smith to White out of the backfield. And that's the reserve linebacker Richard McBride on the stop as Deshaun Davis has come to the sideline as well. So essentially the second team linebacking squad is in. And if you're ULM, that's who you want to pick on. And you do it just like that. You get the running back white out of the backfield into the flat one on one coverage and you try to beat a backup linebacker. Obviously you're in the SEC and not the Sun Belt, but that was a well orchestrated play for ULM. Turner in motion, third and three. Quick hitter, intercepted, Javaris Davis. And Kevin still was bringing pressure. Two guys off to that side that the quarterback Smith threw into. And Jarvis Davis understands there's pressure on the quarterback. It's going to be a quick throw. I can jump it and be pretty safe about it. And then that's exactly what he got. The ball was on a slant, which is a side adjustment because of the pressure that the quarterback is getting. Davis jumps the slant, beats Williams to the ball. Big play, Albert. And it's the first Auburn drive today to start in plus territory thanks to the interception from Vernon Davis's cousin Javaris. Cam Martin who saw no run in the first half has had quite the second half. And second down, Auburn, number six in the country in the college football playoff ranking. And the defensive coordinator for Auburn, Ken 
Kevin Steele told us that he has three rules, great effort, physically, mentally tough, and tackle when you get there. And the fourth thing he said is on me, which is to put those guys in a position to win, and that's exactly what Davis did on the interception. Stidham had a deep ball touchdown earlier. This one he flares out to the sideline, Martin. There is nobody around. Touchdown! Two yards, he could have gone a hundred. Yeah, Martin could certainly still be running. There was great coverage down the field. Stidham did a great job of stepping up in the pocket, buying some time, and then finding Martin all by his lonesome out on the sideline. And we showed you that LSU game from a couple of weeks ago. That's what was missing in the passing game was the check down. It was a lot of verticals and a lot of running plays. But there, Martin out of the backfield gets Auburn a touchdown and creates a 21-point lead. A lot of games going on. You know what you have to click on. It's the ESPN app. Every ESPN and ABC college football game live at home or on the go scores news highlights. But not only that. If you download the ESPN app, you get a little fun, too, from some of our football crews. We play a game called 90 Second Yearbook, which you can find right now. Oh, my Lord. Follows me on Twitter. Wait, does he really? Yeah. Sorry. He has a great male, yes, uh, and I'm not going to use too. the rest of my time about your terrible Twitter followers. Um, sorry about it. So mine is, is I, I think Kelly's a parrot head. Are you a parrot head? I don't even know what that is. You have, you have 10 seconds. Jimmy Buffett is mine. Over oh, 30 cool. tours. He went here his freshman year. Is he a Hall of Famer? Did he have a cartoon <laughs> character Does named after? Does he have a great uh, male product uh, commercial? Cheeseburger. Uh, he's well, he's the third guy there. See that? Yeah. Bo Jackson. I had Bo Jackson. I think we could have stopped the conversation right there. I mean, he did win the Heisman Trophy. He was like the best two-sport athlete in our lifetime. You did tell a great story about Brian Bosworth that folks can find if they go click on that involving Bo Jackson and Monday Night Football. Touchback, Chris Cotter. Turnover chain, working with magic once again. Miami down seven. Kirk Banker, we talked about how great a day he's having. One mistake, though. That's big. Jaquan Johnson, pick six. Break out the chain. Miami and Virginia all tied over on ABC. Clemson, meanwhile, no issues with their neighbors from downstate. 52 to nothing right now. Kelly Bryant had a big day. So did Travis uh, Etienne. Both of them on the bench now with a big lead for Clemson. People got to stop going to that jewelry store. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a smart place to shop. Our Chris Button went there big time when we had Miami earlier in the year. She had like 27 chains on her neck before it was all said and done. Here's Derek Gore on the run for ULM. And he's across the 30. So now Auburn with 13 touchdowns of 40 or more yards, a couple of them today. And this Auburn team offensively is, is doing the job that they were hoping to do in the first half. And I put it on Auburn's defense, really gave Auburn's offense the opportunity to get going. I mean, after the first drive by ULM, Kevin Steele and company haven't allowed anything out of this group. Gore, the Alabama transfer from Nottingham High School in Syracuse, same high school that provided Dorsey Levins, the former Green Bay running back. Well, Auburn has uh, some other things on the horizon, which we'll tell you about in the fourth quarter as well, but the Iron Bowl is looming. For that the might Tigers. Be a big one. Yeah. <laughs> Always is, and usually, as we showed you earlier, provides at least a competitor for the national championship, whatever it's labeled at the time. Third down and two for Garrett Smith. He does have Williams, and the ball's loose. See how they rule it. I Auburn it, football. Yeah, I think, Jason, it was ruled a catch on the field. The question is whether Brian Williams completed this catch. 
You have to complete the catch by completing an act common to the game and he definitely got one step in before the ball was stripped by Javarius Davis. Yeah, that, that's a catch for me. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's a catch as well. And Javarius Davis does a great job. And every play is looked at, but the game isn't being stopped to look at it further right here. So Javarius Davis, who had the interception earlier, and now Moving they will the stop it. Fumble and recovery by the defense. The previous play is under review. Act common to the game. He stows the ball and takes a step. That's yeah. enough for me. Yeah, act common to the game. So in this case, it means turning from a pass catcher to a football runner. And I think Williams was doing that. I think the ball was secure. He was going into his really his second step. I think that I think that is the uh, act common to the game. I think this would be Auburn football. And see, these turnovers were things that were not happening out of ULM in that first half. And that's why they stuck around, but they're starting to happen here. Pretty good ball placement. The back hip on a slant when you have a safety coming down, and Williams had it initially. It was, to me, much less about Williams and much more about Javarius Davis seeing that ball, and the defenders are taught to do that. Ball exposed, hammer at it. And Davis does that. Nick Ruffin with the recovery for Auburn. If this is a lost fumble, it would be the eighth of the year for ULM. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. It's first down. So two drives, two turnovers, and counter that with Auburn holding two touchdown drives under 45 seconds today. I think they call that splash. And they're going to go Wildcat with Carrion Johnson and Martin both in the backfield. How about that? Johnson hands it to Cam Martin. And we had the discussion during the week that you don't want to put anything on tape that Alabama could follow along with. But there's the opposite of that, that if you put something like this on tape, yeah. maybe Saban has to worry about it. Yeah, and Auburn has gone to that quite often with carry on Johnson actually saw it a ton last year when they're having quarterback issues running this offense and then carry on Johnson but it's both of them and we see the tight end flinching I think it was Jalen Harris flinching on his false start offense number 85 five yard penalty remain second down Starks moved but did not get into the neutral zone yeah. and did not simulate the snap so it goes against the tight end Harris that Wildcat personnel grouping is carry on Johnson one running back taking the snap and then Cam Martin we've already seen his speed different skill set you get them both in the game at the same time and one of them gets the ball immediately from the center now Malik Miller is the tailback and Stidham to throw loads of time sideline Slayton got pushed to the boundary by Offray. And no signal of a flag. Yeah, not only did Offre push off, and I think it was just a physical kind of confrontation and fight for the football. I'm glad there wasn't a penalty, but in the meantime, your starting quarterback's getting rolled up on and then getting tagged late. It was actually Casey Dunn that ran into him. The center got pushed back into Stidham. Third and 12. Stidham unloads it, and Miller is about a yard and a half, two yards short of the marker. They do have the SEC's all time leading scorer, Daniel Carlson, to kick. They also have a 28 7 lead, and, and they're playing also, with house money. Yeah, I think Gus Malzahn is throwing it down right here, putting in a heavy personnel grouping, and if his SEC Offensive line can't pick up a yard and a half right here. They have bigger issues than we know about The drama of the fourth down call after this The 
ACC on ESPN. There were some hearts and throats at Jordan Air Stadium early, but Auburn has taken a 28 7 lead as we start the fourth quarter. And we remind you that Monday Night Football this week has Matt Ryan's 5 and 4 Falcons against Russell Wilson's 6 and 3 Seahawks. Monday Night Countdown starts our coverage 6 Eastern on ESPN. They don't play at the Kingdom anymore where you used to play. No, they imploded that thing. <laughs> it's a parking lot now, I think. You miss it? Miss what? The Kingdom? Uh huh. Not that much, no. actually. Fourth down and two for Auburn. And the offense is still visiting on the field, so they're going to go for it. What are you calling here, Jason? I I carry on Johnson. First down. You're a pretty good play caller. Well, when you have that guy in your backfield. And you snap it as we see an offensive lineman down. Austin Golson, number 73, the left tackle, is down. Now back on his feet. That's a good sign. But you're right. Snap it to the guy that can get you that yard and a half, and he doesn't have to do anything with it. And he has a knack, does carry on Johnson, of getting yards that aren't really there blocked for impeccably well and Johnson does it on that play. Cam Martin off the pitch as we say hello to Chris Cotter. Let's get an update on this rock fight in Madison. Wisconsin and Michigan. Alex Hornibrook, look at this gorgeous pass. The lefty puts right on the numbers to A.J. Taylor. He scores. Wisconsin has the lead. Michigan's quarterback Brandon Peters also injured in this game. Well, that's not a good sign. Wisconsin has been kind of muddying around today. Yeah. Unbeaten Badgers. They had center stage to make a statement, and are they doing that? Question mark. Martin bounces off one across the 30. I mean, what is a statement, though? I mean, Auburn's up 28-7. Didn't look great for the first quarter and a half. What's a statement look like to you? I think the statement really with teams that have a path actually to earn their way into the playoff. I don't know that there is a statement other than what you do. You can kind of jump somebody the next week or two, but Auburn has a path to the college football playoff, as does Wisconsin if they keep winning. So I think the statement ultimately is the win. Especially for those undefeated teams as Martin has a first down. Cam Martin, a little guy, strong runner. Oh, man, he has some quickness, too, and he gets to top end speed like in a blink of an eye. And that's, and that's different, Jason, than carry on Johnson. And I think that's important to understand. When you put in a different running back, it changes kind of the metrics that the defense has to play with because it's a different angle. It's speed versus what carry on Johnson does. He does everything well, but his ability to create his own shot in a sense. Martin to the sideline and the speed behind Braden Smith pulling out in front and Cam Martin a great second half. And that's the power play. You have the zone read. You have the power going one side behind an offensive polar. And, and then you saw that speed out of Cam Martin right at the end when a more physical running back probably turns it up. Cam Martin turns it on and gets around the corner. First down from the 11. Martin again. He's down to the two, maybe the one. And Chris Button mentioned that, you know, Auburn was not panicking because they, they hope it just gets rolling, and particularly in the second half, and that's what you're seeing. I think more physical ability out of one First side, down. Auburn, is, and they're starting to lean First on ball, this defensive one. line for ULM, and they're starting to get some gash plays right in the tackle box. Martin. Push back this time. Kerry Starks stood him up. Auburn, one of two teams in the country coming in, averaging 230-plus both pass and rush, and they're already there this afternoon. 
And that's what Chip Lindsey was brought here to do, is to balance out this Gus Melzon offense that was much more run heavy than probably he wanted it, Gus Melzon. And that's what Chip Lindsey has done. Balance it out. Balance is tough to defend. Stidham drops the ball, and ULM has it. They're going to blow it dead. There's a fumble on the play. Travion Webster ran away with the ball, but he was down, and the Warhawks will have it. And I think that's exactly what is being called, that Webster secured the football when he was already on the ground instead of, yeah, that left knee is down. He has the football, does Webster, but if that left knee is just a skosh off the ground, this is a very long scoop and score. That's where the difference lies in the rules for defensive players stowing away a ball and offensive players on a catch. Because That's if that a were a point. catch, you'd have to have the tuck. Yeah. But great defensively, point. he's already got possession with the knee down. You don't have to complete it through the motion. So the play blown dead. And here's ULM backed up but with the ball. Smith was under duress and Gore is slung down by McBride, second down coming up. But Smith had pressure coming into his face. Jordan Peters, the corner, was coming off that short corner and just as Smith play action and was booting outside, Peters was right in his face mask and Smith was fortunate to not only get it off, but he made a very accurate throw to his running back, Gore. Movement at the line, Holland will make you flinch. All start, offense, number 64. Roger, Kennedy, second down. Correction, half the distance to the goal. It's Eastwood Thomas, the sophomore. Uh, look, when you're on the side of number four in that yeah. blue color. Yeah, nine sacks later, and, and it's about his ability to get off on the snap that makes Holland who he is. He's great with his hands. Sensei Mudd is great with his hands, as Chris Button pointed out, but it's the ability to get off the ball quickly. Yeah, that's not going anywhere. Gore stonewalled at the two by Dontavius Russell, the junior D lineman. So now this Auburn defense, which gave up a touchdown drive early, has really settled in. Touchdown drive early and, and really adjusted quickly, and it wasn't unlike Georgia last week against this Auburn defense. Drove it right down the field. But we asked Kevin Steele about that, you know, were you panicked? And he says, no, because they weren't running the football. It was two really good, well-executed pass plays that got Georgia down there in scoring position. So we were defending the run well. Long ball sideline and a tackle. Flag's got to come in on that. In fact, every flag in the stadium came in against Auburn and John Broussard Jr. Broussard was beat by Brown, the wide receiver, and literally tackled him. And little did Broussard know the ball was well over Brown's head. And he didn't have to do that. Defense number 22, 15 yard penalty for the previous spot. Automatic first down. And if you're asking if the ball is catchable, part of it is where would the receiver have ended up if he wasn't torn down? Yeah, down at the bottom of the screen, and it's just a simple go route. Middle of the field is covered by the safety. This ball is well overthrown, but in the meantime, Broussard does not know that. So in college football, you tackle the guy, it's only 15 yards. In the NFL, it's, just, it's where the ball comes down. Smith to the 20-yard line. Brown again with the stop. And whether the pass is catchable or not is something that we've talked to officials about. That's changed dramatically with the onset of some of the best athletes on the planet playing receiver. Those guys used to be power forwards, and now they're out here catching balls and running vertical routes, and they are long dudes. They can catch things that... Guys back in my day couldn't come close to. You're saying Largent couldn't have done it? Yeah, Steve would not have been close to that last <laughs> one. Tackled or not. Smith to Brown. 
who got by Holland for a first down. One thing you'll notice about this team is that they've started to have more fun on the sidelines and on the field. You'll notice some guys dancing here and there. Gus Malzahn said, hey, it all started with him because he went home after the Texas A&M game. His wife, Christy, looked at him and she said, you won. You're not smiling. Are you not having fun? And he realized that he wasn't enjoying the process and the players have started to feed off him. Lesson learned, the wife always knows. Yeah, that's a good point, but you have to look closely if you are going to see Gus Melzon having fun. We actually had to find out from Chip Lindsay what Gus Malzahn does for fun. He said <laughs> Gus Malzahn's answer basically was, wow, win football games, see the joy that our kids derive joy. from winning football games. Yeah. Chip Lindsay said, no, he likes to golf. Yeah, and he apparently has fun losing golf games to Chip Lindsay, is what Chip Lindsay told us. That's one side of the story. I don't know that you should say that about the guy who hired you. You may want to start losing to that guy. Smith is down, and scratch golfer Chris Cotter has an update. I got an update on this Wisconsin game here, guys. And Michigan down to their second string quarterback and neither team can run the football except for this little end around here by Kendrick Pryor. He scores to extend Wisconsin's lead. Michigan's got a way to come back here in the fourth if they want to win it. Close game. Close game. You stay undefeated, don't you? We'll find out. Took a while for Auburn to create some distance. Smith intercepted. He tried to go over the middle, and it was picked off. Ruffin. Touchdown. And the pressure from Moultrie under the quarterback Smith results in the interception. The errant throw is because of Moultrie getting to the legs of the quarterback Smith. That's how it works. Affect the passer, and the pass is affected, and that's what happens right there. And Albert comes up with another one. Extra point duty continues for Daniel Carlson. And Nick Ruffin with the pick six. For the Tigers, they've got their turnovers. They came in the second half. Auburn's defense holding the line for the number 16. So championship urgency can be on both sides of the football, and the defense has certainly provided it for Auburn, especially in the second half. I don't think it's championship anything if it's not collective. So it has to be both sides of the ball, and after the first drive of the first half, Auburn has had that defensively, and it took a while for their offense to get going. They look better here in the second half, playing with pace, by the way, but it's been the pressure on the passer and then the ability to get to the ball. Short kick. Carter just to the 25. Close games everywhere, Chris Cotter. Including one in Lubbock and low scoring, surprisingly. No Kenny Hill today for TCU, so Sean Robinson getting the start. And he's going to find Jalen Rager here for the score. Just 17 to 3 right now, TCU on top. They're still live in the Big 12, though, so this is a big game for the Horn Frogs. Meanwhile, down in South Florida, look at Miami coming back. They were down 28-14 just moments ago. Now they've taken the lead. 31-28, early fourth quarter on ABC, guys. Close game. Miami trying to stay unbeaten against those dangerous Cavaliers who have the Hokies coming up. 
next week on a Friday after Thanksgiving. As Gore the carry, KJ Britt with the stop, and Derek Gore. We were talking to the coaches for ULM, and they said, look, Gore not only brought some Alabama-type emotion to this team, but he's got all the running backs in the weight room yeah. after practice because he learned it at Bama. Yeah, it's it's the Bama way, the, the culture that's there. That's a championship culture, and Gore can bring a little bit of that to ULM and has done that. So how about this Auburn team? Two lost team. Iron Bowl coming up. What do you learn if you're Gus Malzahn today? I think they responded well in the sense that they, in the second half, certainly have looked better than they did in the first half. But they, quite frankly, look better in this second half than they have a lot of second halves this year. So that's a good thing. I think defensively you love what you see. It's been consistently good. Williams on the cutback. A lot of room to roam, Brian Williams. Touchdown. Consistently good until that play. And that was just missed tackles. And Williams got out in space and was able to outrun Nick Ruffin at the end. Moving the pocket because there's been pressure led to the interception, the, the play before and the pick six by Nick Ruffin. But this time, Brian Williams gets into that void. Smith finds him. And then number 19, Nick Ruffin, is a little bit short on that one. ULM showing well, trailing by 21. Williams, a big play. ESPN College Football. Brought to you by Modelo Especial, brewed with a fighting spirit since 1925. And Cake Jewelers, every kiss begins with K. One of the most majestic scenes in college sports. War Eagle flying in at Jordan Harris Stadium. You can watch the whole thing from wherever you're sitting. They release the Eagle, flies around, and finally lands at midfield. And, uh, it has been a more secure landing in the second half for Gus Malzahn's team, although the touchdown for ULM might have created a little anxiety. And Auburn will have it across the 25. This is ULM's Warhawks against War Eagle, so we figured we'd do a little bit of a, a comparison for you. The Warhawk is an honorific for a fighter pilot who flew Warhawk planes. War Eagle, it's a little bit more apocryphal. I, there are four stories that Auburn puts forth. Number one is that a Civil War vet in the stands brought an eagle, it broke free, and the crowd said spontaneously, War Eagle. There are three other stories along with it, so it's kind of like the old game show, To Tell the Truth, Will the Real War Eagle Please Stand Up? But uh, it's fun nonetheless, as Malik Willis has checked in to play quarterback with Malik Miller behind him at running back. And Miller from Willis on a first down run. Malik Willis, who got a little run in that Georgia game, enrolled in January, a freshman out of Atlanta and Roswell High School, former high school baseball player, with an opportunity in a 21-point game. And Malik Williams, or Willis, is that really that dual threat guy, much more of a quarterback runner than is Steedham. And you're going to see more of that, kind of the dual threat ability. And they call him Nick Marshall Mini, and it's a lot of pressure on that young man. Willis on the run, and there is that running ability you're talking about. He is free. Inside the 10. And this is what Nick Marshall did for Gus Melzon. It's this type of thing. It's the quarterback zone read, zone inside, quarterback outside, reading one guy. And you don't get 405, you can get 44 or 45. And that's the ability that Malik Will Willis has. And that's a part of the 
the offense that really isn't there as much with Jared Steedham. It's not the same thing with the, this quarterback in there. Miller on the run up the middle. Jared Steedham today, 18 for 24, 235 and a couple of touchdowns. And Willis has checked in to run the offense for the remainder. Stidham was workman like. He did most of the things that are asked of him. He had the one errant throw that was late and behind the receiver for the pick. But other than that, he ran the offense well. And the offense went with pace in the second half. And I think that was a good adjustment by Chip Lindsay coming out after halftime. Willis just short of the end zone. Willis on the carry. Willis wanted it. He wanted it badly. He got inside the one. I'd be surprised if Will Willis does not get to keep the ball on this play. Out of Willis, Gus Melzon told us he's that guy, and there are a few of them that can make a good play out of a bad play. And as a play caller, you certainly appreciate that. Malik Miller. That explosive play out of Malik Willis leads to Malik Miller finally paying it off inside the one yard line. But offense is a whole lot easier when you have those explosives on your side. Extra point for Carlson out of the hold of Tyler Stovall, Evan Gaddis's former battery mate in the minors. 42-14 your score, Auburn in the lead over ULM. Since 1929, UCLA, USC, 8 Eastern on ABC. Number 11 Trojans and the Bruins. Last two have gone to USC. It's streaming live on the ESPN app. Who you got? I was just going to ask you, you're a GM. Which one are you taking? Oh. You need I've, a quarterback. Pick I've watched one. Rosen for longer. Like we saw him in the high school showcase a couple of years ago. So I would take Rosen just because of more exposure. Arm talent. I really like both of them. I, I question how important the game is to Rosen sometimes. Short kick inside the 25. Take a look at today's defensive spotlight brought to you by Prestone. With the starters injured, Nick Ruffin's gotten some more time. Yeah, back up safety, and he had a strip right there on a slant completion, and he comes up with it, and then quarterback was affected, and Nick Ruffin not only picks it off, but takes it into the end zone. Two timely plays when Auburn's defense assisted Auburn's offense. It looks as though the Tigers are going to not have to pay just over a million dollars to get beat by ULM. Although the defense trying to contain Turner here, he's just short of midfield. We we're talking to the defensive coordinator for ULM during the week, Mike Collins. He's a former ULM player, and back in 1980, he had a game at Iowa State. He recalled very clearly getting clearly. beat 42 to 7 by the Iowa State Cyclones and Dwayne Crutchfield, one of the best players in Iowa State history, just went into the Iowa State Hall of Fame as this one's incomplete. And the reason he brought that up is because these big money games, you're likely going to lose the game. You're likely going to have a guaranteed loss. But he still remembers Crutchfield running through his defense back in 1980 ULM. And he said, look, I, I can't get those cannons firing out of my head. But he remembers it for 30 plus years. So if you're wondering what kind of memories might be made today, that's an example of what the takeaway is, just big time college football for this team out of the Sun Belt. Yeah, and ULM certainly has an opportunity to be a much better team 
Matt Vietor told us just exactly that. You know, we can come out of this game a much better team than going into the game, and that's that's the takeaway for his team regardless. And it's 42 to 14, but it's the memory you talked about with Coach Collins, and a lot of the players and coaches on the field here are going to have a – memory of this one and it's not going to be a pleasant one in that sense but nonetheless it's college football at its best. Duke Carter tackled behind the line by Paul James the third and if you're Auburn going forward toward the Iron Bowl what do you gain from this game? I think you um, need to get healthy and I think you came out of this relatively well. You didn't play well offensively in the first half. The defense played well, I think, the entire game pretty well. A couple of missed tackles in the second half. But I think everything is in front of you. Squarely sits on the table here in this place at night in seven days. Smith incomplete. He wanted the tight end Sloan Spiller. And so Auburn around the corner will put it away. Sports Center at night, 1.30 a.m. Eastern. Who are you going to take? You just asked me the question, Rosen or Donald? Week 12 of the college football playoff race, and James Harden continues on. Tonight, 1.30 a.m. Eastern, Linda Cohn, Kevin Connors on ESPN and the ESPN app. Mel Kuyper Jr. Who's he going to take? I don't know. Oh, we'll find out. He's not a GM, is he? 1.30 a.m. Eastern time. And no kneel down for Auburn. Up big. Huh. Getting the second team some run. Devin Barrett. And by the way, with the Iron Bowl coming up, let's remind you that you're likely going to go to the national championship game if you win the Iron Bowl. Since 2009, only one winner of the Iron Bowl hasn't gone. And so nowadays it's about the college football playoff first, the semifinals, and the bottom line is the takeaway from that is the Iron Bowl means something. You have two really good teams, and the outcome's going to be important for the national landscape in college football. There isn't really any doubt about that. FPI says it'll be close, but tipping right now to Alabama. The Auburn Tigers escape a little bit of a dreary first half to win number nine on the season. It comes against ULM 42-14. Hopefully some good memories as you talked about with Coach Collins, even though uh, ULM ended up on the short end of the stick. But I think Auburn did what they needed to do. And now there's a fairly big game ahead of them in about seven days. Iron Bowl coming up. Auburn, number six in the country, gets a win for Chris and Kelly and our entire crew. I'm Jason. College football scoreboard, Chris Cotter. Working that fade route very well in the end zone.